Hi, and welcome to the tutorial for the online registration system for the Doherty County School System. We'll start by going to www.docoschools.org slash OLR. Here you'll find helpful information on our online registration system, some guidelines for submitting documents, and some helpful information on how to use your smartphone and a, or a scanner to upload documents. At the very bottom of the page, click the link to start your application process. All you have to do is type out your name, the year that you'd like to register for, and your email address. If the child has ever attended the Doherty County School System in the past, check the box here. Then complete the verification window here, typing the letters and numbers exactly as you see them. Capitalization counts here. Once you do, you'll see this window that says thank you for registering and an email has been sent to your inbox. When we check our email, we'll see that there is a online registration welcome message It'll include your name and a list of the information that you'll need to continue registration. Pay close attention to the documents. That'll save you some time. You go ahead and compile those before moving forward. All items that are marked with a red asterisk are required and all dates should be entered in a month, month, day, day, year, 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 year format. Please note that immunization records, all the, the medical documents can be obtained from the Doherty County Health Department. And if you need additional assistance, you can always email info at docoschools.org. To proceed with your registration, click the link below. Now you're ready to start your application. On this first screen, simply type your email in, verifying that the information you're going to enter is true and accurate. Then use your mouse or your finger, uh, if you're on your smartphone, to sign your name. And click Submit. Again, you'll see a list of things that you will likely need to get the application started. Click Begin. And then you can start the application. Type in the phone number. click next street address once you start typing a street number you'll see a list of addresses pop up at the bottom continue typing the address you'll find more addresses okay we'll choose this address and you'll see this is what the address will look like if that's your address Include a zip code if it doesn't have one already. Click next. This is the proof of residency section. Please read in detail this section um, as it pertains to where you live. If you intentionally include false information to try and get into a school zone that is not the one you're properly zoned for, there are criminal repercussions, including fines of up to $1,000 and imprisonment for not less than one or more to five years or both. So it's best just to stay honest and provide the information that we're requesting. Just put your name in the box and upload a utility bill to prove residency in the district. Note that this utility bill must have your name, the name of the parent, on the bill. If it does not have the name of a bill, a separate form is required. Once completed, hit next. If your mailing address is separate from your um, uh, physical address, uh, uncheck the box and you can input 
a, a separate mailing address. Next, we'll fill out, continue filling out the parent guardian information. Please include your birth date, your gender, and what your preferred language is for receiving communications. Here, you'd upload a copy of your ID. Then you put your communication preferences. You must include at least one phone number and an email address. And then select your contact preferences. Please complete this section if you've uh, a migrant worker. And if you're in the military or have previously served in the military, please complete this section. Note that if you click yes, additional options are available for branch, status, and start date. Okay, once completed, hit save and continue. We require at least one emergency contact per student. Outside of the parent themselves. So for this student, it will be Jane Doe, female. Next, there must be at least one contact number. And if this person lives in the same house as the parent who's filling out the application, please mark the box. If you have anyone else living in your household that you'd like to document who is not of school age, that would be someone who may be an infant or a toddler, but they're not yet enrolled in school, you can include their information here. It's not required. So now we get to the part about entering student information into the online application. First, click Add Student, and then put all the relevant information. If they have a middle name, include it. If they don't have a middle name, you click the box. Gender, birth date, so this one's 2007. Social security number, okay. enrollment grade. And when you choose an enrollment grade, you'll see that based on your address that you entered earlier, which zoned school your child is zoned for. So we'll say uh, that this child is in seventh grade and you see that it tells you it's Albany Middle School. If you believe there to be an error here, please contact the zoning office at Doherty County School System or email info at docoschools.org. Okay, that's the only information that's required here. We want the next, is this his student Hispanic or Latino? And what is their ethnicity? Any housing. Uh, the McKinney-Vento Act defines housing and homeless youth as an individual who lacks a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence. Um, if your child or, or youth is uh, sharing housing with other people due to loss of housing on their own, economic hardship, or a similar reason, um, if they live in motels, hotels, trailer parks, camping grounds due to lack of alternative adequate accommodations, if they're living in emergency or transitional shelters, or if they're living in an abandoned hospitals or awaiting foster care placement. Children who had youth who have a primary nighttime residence that is a public or private place not designed for or ordinarily used as a regular sleeping accommodation for human beings. Children and youth who are living in cars, parks, public places, abandoned buildings, substandard housing, buses or train stations in similar settings and migratory children who qualify as homeless because they're living in circumstances described above, then you need to mark the appropriate box. Is the student homeless? Yes, the student's not homeless. Note that this does not mean necessarily that the student is living on the streets. They could be living with someone else. 
it's not a permanent house, um, permanent uh, residence for them. So uh, please mark the appropriate box. Yes. Um, and we'll say that they have a shared house. Um, do they have an IEP? We'll say yes. Based on your responses, the appropriate staff person, the Dorton County School System, will be notified um, so they can provide the best level of service to you. Okay. Language preferences. Previous school. Have they been suspended? We'll say sample school. Sample city. In South Carolina. Uh, down to the United States. And if you don't know the phone number, that's okay. All right, then the relationships of the person filling out the application. So that would be father. And contact sequence for if we have to contact them, the, the person in order that you'd like us to contact. All right, this is the emergency contact. I'll set them as emergency. I want to contact them second. Okay, primary care provider. If you'd like to put your medical professional's information in there, you can. Uh, if they have medical or mental health issues, um, you can add them here. That can be something as simple as allergies, or it could be something chronic like um, fainting spells or heart and lung issues. Uh, but anything that school needs to know about your students. So we'll say this student has epilepsy. And go next. And then they have a medication sample meds it's taken at school and it's taken daily. Okay. It work, the student requires bus transportation. When you click this, our, our transportation department will be notified that you need bus transportation. And here you upload uh, the required documents, which would be your birth certificate, your eye, ear, dental screening certificate, which is there, and a Georgia immunization certificate, which is available from the local health department. All right, directory information. This is simply uh, information that allows us to publicize your students. So if they make honor roll or if they do something uh, outstanding as an athlete, we can publicize that information. If you don't want us to publicize that information, you can opt the student out by clicking this box here. If you don't mind us publicizing your student, then say yes. We don't, I don't mind their information being provided. Uh, field trip permissions, that's pretty self-explanatory and technology you have to click the link to read our um, acceptable use policy for computers and internet and all that good stuff scroll down um, familiarize yourself with that policy once you have you click agree our athletics policy this is simply saying that um, you're not um, saying that you live somewhere you you don't live just for the purposes of getting your student athlete into a, a better sports program You've read and understand that. Please sign below. Okay. And hit next. And then finally, the enrollment after session. This is just saying that everything you've done up to this point is correct, that you provided the correct documents, that you haven't falsified anything. And so we're going to put that initials, save and continue. And that completes the uh, student enrollment process for your student. Hit save and continue. And at this point, you need to submit the application for review. Once you submit it, you cannot go back and edit it. At this point, you can go back and edit any section that you'd like. But up until this point, you can, you have to. You're limited to where. Um, after this point, you're limited to where where you can do it. Okay. So um, please uh, please make note of that. Hit submit when you're ready, confirm, and then a staff member will be sent your application and they will review it and respond back to you in a, a timely fashion.